good folks it's nightmare frame here with a new warframe video coming at you with the latum build guide giving you some of the craziest builds that you can use with this weapon i recently released the primary uncarnate weapon fenmore if you haven't checked that out please go do they might have few of the same perks but they perform differently these weapon blueprints can be purchased from caballero you have the secondary primary and the melee now, some of you may be wondering, wait, wait, how did you unlock the fifth evolution of the primary and secondary if you do not meet the requirements of unlocking this blueprint? Well, you can just buy it from other players. Yeah, yeah, the, the blueprints are tradable. See, see, if you, if you click on it, it says, it says tradable. Yeah. Good luck! I will be showing you builds for its incarnate and primary mode. There are builds for the Latum's primary mode, but they're nothing compared to its incarnate form. Especially if you do not enjoy slow aim gaming. And let's be honest, who wants to aim in Warframe? Right? Let's quickly go over the evolution trees and their traits and see how we will build this secondary. And unlike the primary weapon, Fenmore, I will be building Latum for crits. Of course, the first evolution is allowing you to transform into its incarnate form. Pretty self-explanatory right there. As we move on to the second evolution, evolution two is down to personal preference. Going from right to left, the first one is, is useless. Don't bother with this. Nobody's gonna use this. Now you're left with the fire rate increase or the recoil reduction, and this weapon does have a lot of kick to it, way more than the Fenmore. And the loadouts that require you to aim, the recoil reduction will be very beneficial. And the fire rate node is of course a DPS increase. And this one will pair well with any of the builds, mostly the incarnate mode. But take note, it crazy amounts of fire rate will deplete the incarnate mode a lot faster. Evolution 3. Now the three traits in Evolution 3 benefit the primary mode only, and none of them affect the incarnate form. The first node can be really fun with Zephyr. You float in the air and have that great ammo efficiency. Hey, what this means is that you spend less time reloading. Second node, Awaken Readiness, is more catered towards niche builds, the ones that require you to switch back and forth from your primary and secondary. For example, if you're doing disruption with this weapon, I personally do not use this. I personally prefer the final node. That 30% increased reload speed, that stacks up to three times, which is very useful and probably the most favorable one by a decent amount of people. And when we move on to evolution four, from right to left, and looking at the first one, we're definitely gonna ignore this one. We don't need it because we want this weapon to crit. Incarnate efficiency is self-explanatory. This is going to be the best one to take if you're focusing on incarnate builds. And finally, Kaput Mortem, the headshot damage multiplier. The third trait is more focused on the primary version of this build, as this multiplier does stack with Deadhead, but the damage downside is that deadhead is bugged with gas on secondaries and a slash build will not stack up deadhead so the other option would be an electric build however you can have this as the main headshot damage multiplier as you run other gun arcanes like dexterity or merciless and now we are on our final evolution tree. Let's quickly go over Devouring Attrition. This works exactly like the Fen War. As you fail to crit, you will deal increased damage. This 2000% damage is a final damage multiplier, so it's not base damage. So you could use this for non-crit builds, but since all the builds shown here today will be focused on crits, we will completely ignore this trait. And for the ammo efficiency, this is useless. It doesn't do anything to increase your damage and will not bother with this one. Now, the one that I actually picked, Overwhelming Attrition. It grants a 400% base damage that stacks up to three times. Yes, this is base damage and it will be additive with your gun arcanes and base damage mods like Hornet Strike. And since this is a base damage multiplier, it affects all of your damage output from crits and damage over time. So when you deal damage with non on crits and damage that does not apply status effects, you gain increased 
base damage. And guess what? This can be easily achieved with damage over time and additional pellets that don't crit or apply status effects. Yes, dots do not proc more dots. Who would have thought? So you can easily keep up this buff, which frees up a slot so you don't have to put Gun CO on your build. Now that you got the general idea of these evolutions, let's go over and take a look at the builds. All right, taking a look at the first build, which will be the primary focus build and not the incarnate one. We have Marksman Hand on Evolution 2, Lethal Rearment on 3, Kaput Mortem on 4, and finally, Overwhelming Attrition on the fifth evolution. I will be running Arcane Velocity on my Warframe for the increase in fire rate when we crit. And we will be critting. The build is very straightforward. I do have Secondary Merciless here for my base damage multiplier, which stacks up to 12 times. But if you're taking this into disruption, I would highly recommend to take dexterity why dexterity because it gives you that holster speed and melee kills will build up the base damage but for regular gameplay definitely go for the merciless my faction mod to multiply my damage and double dip with dot's and the main dot here is going to be bleeds from all that slash we're going to be proccing diffusion for the multi shots extra pellets more damage and chances to proc our overwhelming attrition crit chance crit damage and over here i have two slash mods now you can replace maim with anemic agility for even more fire rate but i just wanted to proc slash a lot more consistently since we don't have great status chance over here i do have the 60 60 mods as you may notice one of them is unranked and the other one is one off the max now why have i done this it is to reduce the proc priority reducing the chances of me proccing more violence viral than slash as you notice here my slash weighting is way above the viral weighting you can even put a max rank pistol pestilence you'll still be fine as long as you remain way below the slash all right showcase this build as you see that's a lot of damage But there is something else that you can do with this build and just making it comfortable to use in survival missions. First, I will be dropping down Pistol Pestilence to one and dropping Maim and replacing it with Seeker for that punch through. We still have increased slash and our viral is way below the slash. Now, why the punch through? Because now we can hit enemies through other enemies. As you see, that 2.1 meters is pretty damn good for ad clearing. And we're keeping up our buffs fairly easily. We have the reload speed increase when we get those headshots and the increased base damage for when we fail to crit or fail to proc a status effect. And now looking at the incarnate form builds. With the second evolution, I went with fire rate. You can go with the weapon recoil reduction, but fire rate is also pretty damn good. And here, still remains the same. The fourth evolution, headshots, of course, will build up incarnate form way faster. Who would have thought? Wow. And the final evolution remains the same. That's all that changed. The downside is you do have to go back and forth to Caballero just to change the evolution trees, which is annoying. We should definitely, here for quality of life DE, we should just have it here. I mean, it's, it's we can already see it. We should just have the button. We should just have the option to click and change in our arsenal. We don't have to load into a mission, go to an NPC, click, leave, go to a mission. It's, 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 it's so convoluted. Come on, come on, it's, it's right there. Click, change. I mean, it's quality of life. Anyway, the first build is going to be the corrosive build. Shoot headshots, build up incarnate. Switch. And destroy. As you can see, overwhelming attrition is kept up fairly easy. Ow. 
And this build is gonna shred Acolytes way, way too easily, since they are weak to Corrosive. Taking a look at the build. Merciless for the base damage. Faction mod, multi-shot, crit chance, crit damage. Three elements. Going with corrosive and heat. Heat for that little extra ad clear and DOT to keep up attrition and for even more damage output. Fulmination for the explosion radius increase. And steady hands just for the <laughs> recoil reduction. And now to the more fun builds, the gas build. Pretty much the same as the previous one, but we just changed out the elements and increased fire rate. This works really well if you're using grouping, focus schools, or helmet abilities. You can go with the Vazrin grouping ability. Does a decent amount of work. That's some good damage. So, whatever you like, really. Group them up, hit them with gas. And in survival, this completely shreds because you have a lot more fodder units than elite units. And even if the Eximus do show up, as long as some enemies are grouped around the Eximus, they're just gonna die. So yeah, these are the three builds that you can definitely check out. We have the primary version and the two incarnate builds, Corrosive Heat and Gas. Fairly straightforward and they deal a lot of damage. All right, guys, that has been it from this video. And if you did enjoy and learned something from it, please feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content, streams, and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching, and as always, peace.